Hey guys, and welcome to my spotlight of Pneumaticraft. This is in Minecraft version 1.7.10. This is the Pneumaticraft version 1.2.5. There have been some updates lately on just the looks and different things. GPS look different, the upgrades look different. They also, instead of doing pressure pipes and stuff like that, instead of doing like a flow detector pipe, it's now on a module. Because now we get added on to different things. They changed the look of the wrench. They have new item like the network data storage and just different things. A lot of different things look different and I kind of like it this way. And with the modules, the way they have that set up is just really interesting. So let's get into this real quick. We're trying to make it under the 15 minute mark, so we're going to see if we can do this. Alright, so here's all your different types of plastic. These are your main five. This is going to be, you're going to want all these seeds. All these seeds are world gen except for the fire seeds or the nether. They only spawn on netherrack. Squid seeds spawn only on water, so you'll find those in the ocean, on rivers, ponds, that kind of stuff. Same thing with the enderplant seeds, you'll find this in endstone. You can also get these from endermen, so like say if you need like slime seeds, they're around here somewhere. Slime seeds, slime seeds. You can get those by killing slimes, creeper plant seeds, you can kill by killing creepers. So some of them are world gen, most of them are. Some of them you can get from mobs, depending on what it is. The only other seed is the helium seed. The helium seed is very interesting because it doesn't spawn on the ground like a lot of these. So let's just say, let's grab these fire seeds, no, not fire seeds, rain seeds and helium seeds. So when you plant these seeds, you can't use MFR, you can't plant them with a plant or anything like that. You can't right click to plant them, you have to hit Q. You have to drop them on the ground. So when you go to pick them up, you can pick them up and they can land on the ground, they'll plant again so they can be kind of annoying but that's how you plant these seeds and any kind of other seeds except for the helium seeds the helium seeds are really cool when you go to plant these on the ground you they fly away you can keep doing this and they'll just keep flying away these only spawn on nether rack on the ceiling so the only place to find these are on the nether on the roof ceiling you're going to need a jetpack or some way to fly up to actually get them. So that's another thing about helium seeds. Helium seeds are kind of cool too because they also make the vortex cannon. Which I'll get into that later with the miscellaneous different really cool things you can do with Pneumaticraft. But this is the basics. You're going to want these five main seeds. Your creeper plant seeds, squid plant seeds, lightning plant seeds, fire flower seeds, and rain plant seeds. You use these in a pressure chamber and you turn them into the plastic. So depending on what they are, it depends on what they turn into, you know, however. So you just kind of scroll over it. It tells you the soil is netherrack for fire seeds. Rain is dirt, grass, farmland, and squid seeds is water. The only other one is the enderplant seeds, which is endstone in, in the end. So, yep. All these seeds down here are used for plastic, or not plastic. All these seeds are used for programs. So if you look over here, you go into programs, depending on what you want, depends on what color you need. So if you want a start program, you need the pollution seed. If you want the program attack entity, you need the fire seed. So depending on the color, it depends on what kind of program you can do with it. We'll get into programs later. This is actually going to be several videos, so it's going to take a little while. So let's get into this real quick. So that's the seeds. So you're going to need a lot of these basic seeds, these five seeds. You're going to want several stacks. These ones, you'll probably just want a stack of. You're not going to need a lot, depending on how many programs you do. So we're going to go over here to the items. So they add compressed iron. This compressed iron cannot be put in a compressor. The only way to compress it is either with a pressure chamber or like this. Come over here. We'll drop the iron. Oops, I lost my iron. Sucks. Grab the iron, throw it in the hole next to the thing of TNT. Light off the TNT. This is inefficient. This will give you 30%, but this is the only way to do this. That This is one of my other explosion holes I did earlier. So that time, I got 49 out of 64. So depending on, you know, how lucky you are, you have a 30% chance of getting... You, get, you lose 30%, you get 70% back. So that's compressed iron. So then you have your compressed iron blocks, which is just a 3x3 three three of the crafting table, you know, just, it's compressing it, so then you can use, like, as a decoration or place it in the world, unlike the ingots. Alright, we'll go on to the pressure tubes. Pressure tubes, you're going to use a lot of these. You don't want to go crazy with them, because you're going to want to upgrade to the advanced pressure tubes, but this is the, your basic. So, let's look at the pressure tubes real quick. Pressure tubes, this is the recipe. 
So two compressed iron and glass, you get four. You get a four for a lot of different things. Like even when you go into like programs, say the network nodes, you get sixteen. So you usually get more than just one. So here's the compressor. Here's how you're gonna produce all your pressure. So we'll look at the recipe for that, which is just compressed iron, a furnace, and a pressure tube. So like I said, you're gonna use pressure tubes in a lot of recipes. It's also used in the multi-block system, like over here. You use pressure tube to go into your pressure chamber. So you're gonna need it for a lot of different things. And then your pressure chamber wall. Your pressure chambers are a multi-block structure. It think of it like a cold coke furnace. It's a three by three minimum or three by three by three minimum with an open center because all your compression is gonna be done in the center of the chamber. So you need an open air block there. So to build that, you're gonna need a pressure chamber wall, which is just four or eight compressed iron, and you get four chamber walls. And then you got your valve. Oh, uh, there's the valve. So you need a pressure tube, a compressed iron, and you get four valves. And then pressure chamber windows, same thing. You got glass and compressed iron. You're going to want these because you're going to want to see into your tank. You're going to want to see what's going on inside your pressure chamber. So that's your basic blocks. The interfaces are used for more efficient ways to do this. I'll go over that when we go over to the next one. But I'm going to show you the basic structure of this. So this is the inefficient way to do it. Apparently I already blew my chamber up again. These chambers blow up very easily, so you don't want to like set these and then just walk away. You're going to want to keep an eye on them. So you hook up your compressor with pressure tube, and if you see the black, that means you're losing pressure into the world. You're basically wasting pressure. So it has to be a closed system. So if you say you put a pressure tube here, it's going to go there. So unless you link this around in a circle like this, you're going to lose pressure. So let's get rid of those. Don't need waste. You click on the interface, and you know you've done it correctly when you have an, a GUI. The old version, when you clicked on these tabs, would go underneath your NEI. Well, now it actually goes, it moves your NEI. So you don't have to close your window or make all your stuff disappear so you can make it work. You have a pressure tab. It tells you exactly how much pressure you have. You can look at your gauge and get a general idea. But if you look at your pressure tab, it tells you exactly what you have. Your volume is this 1,000 milliliters by volume, and then your 60 milliliters is your air block. So if you add those up, you get your 17 milliliters. 1700, I don't know where the extra 100 milliliters came from, but oh well. But that's your basic. If you have pressure in your system, this number will be higher than this number. If you have a vacuum, this number will be lower than this number. So a lot of it deals with air pressure just in a general sense. If you understand air pressure, you'll understand this pack quite well. You also have information, tells you about the structure. Look at your upgrades. You can have life upgrades, volume upgrades, security upgrades. I'm going to go over the upgrades later. There's so much into this pack. It's ridiculous. And if you have any problems, it'll come up here. I'll tell you what your problem is. Right now, there's no valid item in the chamber. So insert a valid item into the chamber and fix your problem. So basic stuff. You also have your pressure chamber status. It tells you about your pressure chamber. It tells you if, you know, if it's not completed or whatever. So the way to do this is you have to break these blocks to put items inside them. We'll do that. We'll get some iron. I can spell it right. We'll get a stack of iron, put it in the chamber. And that is why you want your valve. You don't want to put the valves there. That's not what you want to do. Alright, so now that we have an item in there, it takes two bars to pressure this up. So if you go into your NEI and say you want compressed iron, it tells you how to do it. You use your pressure chamber, get up to two bars, and you'll make compressed iron. So after you put the item in there and it gets up to two bars, it'll change into compressed iron. The one thing to note is this valve has to be up here at the top. If you do this, I'll show you momentarily. You don't put that valve there and you say you put the valve down here. You're not getting any pressure because it's not going into the multi-block. It's not hitting the air. It has to hit the air block in the center. So you can't put it on the bottom, you can't put it on the corner. It has to be near the air block. So that's the inefficient way to do it. That's how you have to do it for a little bit until you get your plastic. So after you get your items in there, you're going to need to make your plastics. Your plastics are going to be your seeds. It needs to get to 0.5 bars to make it work. So we're going to come over here real quick. This is the efficient way to do it with the interfaces and everything. We'll look at the interfaces real quick. So it's pretty idiot proof. I is for import. O, or I is for in. O is for out. So depending on where you place this, depends on the direction it's going to be. 
So you don't use a wrench or anything like that. You just place the block, and that's how your imports and exports are going to be. We're going to come over here. And these are the omnidirectional hoppers. These are from Pneumaticraft. Basically, what you're going to want is some way to put items into here. You can't click them in there. You can't drop them in there. You have to have an item do it for you. So we got the chamber. I'm going to make some really quick plastic. I have an item filter here. So here goes the plastic. goes into the chamber. Opens the door. Closes the door. Comes up here. And the item will drop. And it's already in there. And already turned into plastic. So let's break this down here. And we'll get the plastic out real quick. And we just made plastic. So to make these interfaces, you're going to need this plastic. So here's the interfaces. If I can get this. I'm not going to make it under the 15 minute mark. So you're going to need these pneumatic cylinders. Pneumatic cylinders are this plastic. So you can press the seeds into plastic, and that's how you do that. Here's your cannon barrel. Here's your recipe for your cannon barrel. And then here's the safety module. We'll go over the modules later, but this is how you do it. Here's your recipe for it. You need a pressure gauge, tube, and two levers, and that's how you make a pressure gauge. Sorry if I'm going really fast in this. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment, and I can explain it. This is one of the packs I actually quite know very well. So we're going to run over. This is how I set my systems up. It is a 5x5x5 five by five by five with a 3x3x3 three by three by three inside. So like I said, this is a multi-block structure. This also holds tons of air in it right now. It holds, yeah, 43,000, or no, 433,000 milliliters. So it's a big setup. I also make sure I have windows so I can see what's going on inside the chamber. One thing is with these, depending on how much pressure you're putting into this, these pressure tubes have a limit on what they can push in. So if you're making like tons of plastic or tons of different things, every time you open and close one of these interfaces, you lose pressure. So you're going to need quite a few compressors if you're going to do a setup this big. It takes quite a while to fill up. So I always put two valves. So if I have to put a bank of compressors over here and a bank of compressors over here, I can do that. But this is this is my setup. This is how I do it. That's why I made a sign. This is how I do it. And then I have my interfaces over here on the side to put items in and then to take items out in the bottom. You can do the items in and out however you want. This is the safest way to do it. This pack is fairly new. So there are some glitches. You might hear some air pressure dropping and different things like that. So you do have to work with it a little bit. You have to kind of understand air pressure and that kind of stuff. So if you don't understand air pressure, it's going to be a little bit harder. So here's one really cool thing. This is a creative compressor. It's only in creative mode. I use it for demonstrations. But it's set for two bars. When you have a window, it shows you the particle effects. So right now, it shows you the particles for, you know, two bars. So you can see you have a little bit of pressure in there. You know, two bars isn't bad. You can do a lot of stuff with two bars. When you open and close those gates, you'll lose pressure. So let's run over here real quick. This one's set for five bars, and you can see a lot more pressure. One thing with these, though, when you get to the red zone, you're going to start blowing stuff up. So we're going to come over here to my explosive area, which I've been blowing up a lot. So this thing is set for 20 bars, which is the max that any kind of pressure tube that they have right now can handle. This pressure tube can only handle five, so this is what happens when you get an explosion. And mini explosion, that one was very cool. Let's try one more. And that one was very cool. So let's stand just like right, right here. I've actually shot myself quite a distance. There we go. That's an explosion. Anything that uses that much pressure or whatever, it can fail. The pressure chamber can explode. The pipes can explode. It all depends. Well, you don't want more than five pounds of pressure. And that's where the modules are going to start coming in. That's where the upgrades are going to come in. And all that kind of stuff. So that's basically the basics. That is how you will start Pneumaticraft. I will have videos on pretty much the rest of how Pneumaticraft works. So if you guys would like to stop by and have a look at those, please if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, leave a comment, let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about Nomadicraft, think of my video. Just eh, just leave me comments. So thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.